All right, welcome back. So I am actually traveling for the holidays, hence the uh, Santa cap. The one thing I like to do when I come back home to Virginia to visit my family is trout fishing. So the next few episodes uh, are gonna be my go-to trout flies, Elijah's go-to trout flies, who's the guide here at Smooth Angler. Um, they work pretty much in any watershed that has nymphs, stoneflies, helgramites, things of that sort, and little bait fish. So we're gonna tie three flies. I'm gonna wear the same outfit in each one because I'm gonna knock them out back to back to back. Uh, so hopefully you enjoy the next three episodes. Uh, they're super simple. They should take around three to five minutes each. Uh, very, very limited materials. Um, so hopefully you enjoy. Uh, and also the beer I'm drinking this time is Three Notch. Um, this is a lemongrass rye, super good. Um, so grab your beers and let's get time. All right, so we're gonna tie this pretty quickly. Um, so I'm using a size 16 hook. You can tie this pretty much down to a size 24 or 26. Uh, I like the hook to have a little bit of a bend. Um, I already put the bead eye on there. You can change the size of this bead eye if you want, but just keep in mind, this is up to your variation and how you wanna do it. So I'm gonna use black thread. So you just build this back. I like to tie these all the way back to where the hook starts bending and then back into that curve slightly. I'm going to snip off this excess here. I'm going to spin my thread because I'm using a big game thread here. Makes it a little bit faster if you use a thicker thread because you're building up a thread base. All right, so now that you have that tied in, you're gonna take some wire. I'm using just the wire that I have here. This is just a large wire. Um, I prefer to use a medium if you can, um, or medium or small also. But, so you tie that in, and now you're gonna build it a taper as you move forward, so towards the eye of the hook. So it's gonna be smaller in the back, and as you're moving forward, just slow down a little bit. As you're moving forward, because you want the front part of the fly to be thicker than the back part. So now I'm just building up the body of this fly. So I'm gonna have a, a little taper going on. Alrighty, so now I have the taper that I want in this fly. Um, you don't want to jam this uh, bead head because you do want to stick the wire in the bead head. Um, so I always wrap opposite of the way that I wrapped the thread. This is going to keep that thread a little bit nicer over time. You want to space these out, maybe a millimeter, half a millimeter. Play around with it. All right, so now I have it where I want it, up to the, the bead. You can move this back and forth. I keep a pair of dull scissors to cut wire. So now you just tie that in. All right, so now my wire is tied in. That's it. Just now you whip finish, and you're good to go. Cool. 
Now this fly is ready to fish. If you want to make it more durable, um, cover this with epoxy and hit it with your light. Uh, you can also hit it with some Sally Hansen nail polish. That works just as fine. Um, I'm going to leave a little excerpt after this. You could tie this in a bunch of different variations. So play around with it and enjoy it. So the zebra midge is super simple to tie as you just saw. Um, it's really three materials. You have your bead eye, you have some laps of, of uh, some wraps of lead or we use non-lead wire here. Um, and then you just wrap up whichever color thread that you want. One thing mentioned uh, during the, the tying video are the different variations that you can do with a zebra midge. So have, have fun with it and do a couple of variations. Um, what I like to do is tie mine with white thread if I'm doing purple or pink or red. Um, the reason being is you could just take a Sharpie, color the thread as you are finishing the last few wraps. And then when you move forward, you can just epoxy the whole thing uh, and it stays uh, whichever color that you, you painted that white thread. Um, a couple other things that you could do is you can put a tail on your midges if you want. Um, you could use CDC, uh, you can use like Hungarian partridge, you can use uh, like a mallard, uh, really anything for the tail. The only thing is like you don't want like a pheasant tail because in this tail, the bobkin or the, uh, the two pieces that separate are just going to be too hard of a tail. So you want like a softer feather for a tail. Um, you could also use like a synthetic. Uh, the other thing that you could add is like a slight wing on the back or uh, right on the other side of the bead head of the eye. So you have the hook bend, and you have the bead head, and you have the eye of the hook. If you put a little bit of um, material on the back, you can create a little wing. You can also you can use CDC, you can use any sort of feather, you can also use synthetics. Uh, that'll give it the more of an impression of an emerger, of an emerger fly. Uh, so just keep in mind those different variations. Uh, tie them in whatever colors. I like black, purple, and red. Um, red definitely if the fish are keying in on that. Um, I think black works most places. And purple, I've found, has worked really well in like a, a lighter day. So if, the, if it's super sunny and the water's clear, I like purple. Um, so give it a try. Let me know what you think. And uh, keep in touch prior to the next video. So stay smooth.